Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today we're going to talk about ball heads. Can they be used for wildlife photography effectively? And if so, how? I've got some stuff set up back here. I'm going to go test it out and we'll get to it right after this. So today we're looking at the ball head. Now this is the most common tripod head used universally for photography, but not necessarily the most common or popular for wildlife photography. I'm going to show you why that a lot of people choose to use gimbal heads instead of ball heads, but I'm also going to try to show you a lot of ways that it makes sense or the versatility that this product has and why you might want to consider it for your wildlife bag. Before we do that, just real quickly, how does it work? So it's got a knob down here that's got a panning base. So basically just tension controls the ability to pan horizontally. And then on the top, another tension knob will control this head up top. Now, what's interesting is the strength of this ball head is that it allows a lot of subtle changes in all sorts of angles. That can be really helpful in things like wildlife, or I'm sorry, in landscape, or even if you're in a studio and you're setting up and you just got to get these fine adjustments. A gimbal, because it only has a horizontal base and here's an example and a tilting base, you don't get as many fine controls. There's not as much movement in there. But for wildlife photographers, we don't necessarily want a lot of movement. I'm going to show you that in just a second. As far as construction, I'm going to show you inside of one of these real quick. I took off the bottom and you could see here how it's put together. Most of these are very similar. The quality might be a little bit different. The, the machining might be a little bit different, but the concept is very much the same. The horizontal panning is going to be controlled by a knob that puts pressure down here. And then on this Faisal ball head, you'll actually be able to see right through here. And you can see the screw that actually puts tension on the ball head. I'm going to show you just visually with my hands. Picture a cup, a nylon cup with a ball inside of it. The ball is bigger than the rim, so it's never going to really fall out unless the housing were to break. And some sort of clamp around the end that when you tighten that thread, it's going to either pull the clamp together or push it together. And that's what's going to create tension on that nylon cup, which then puts tension on the ball and eventually will lock it out into place. That's how it works. Now, why is it, why is it so popular? Well, I, I told you before, it, it can do a lot of things. It can move all over the place. But for wildlife photography, the ability to move all over the place isn't necessarily a good thing. Let me set this up real quick and I will show you an example. So this is my 400 millimeter lens. Uh, this setup that I've got on here, I believe it weighs in the neighborhood of about 15 pounds. Now I'm using, just to, for equipment standpoint, a, ro a set of Robus tripod legs and a Robus ball head. The ball head is a very high quality ball head. It runs around $400. Now, that seems like a lot. Keep in mind, a lot of these ball heads can go all the way up to 800 or even more, but you can get a good ball head at around $200 is probably the price point you're going to start to see the quality that you need. Because we're dealing with heavier lenses in wildlife, you do want to put, if you're using a ball head, you want to make sure that it's rated to support at least 40 or 50 pounds, even if your equipment is lighter than that. If you've got a lighter setup, maybe you're comfortable going a little bit lower. I like this Robus um, a lot. I'll put the specs down here at the bottom. Now I told you about the ability for it to move all over. So with a little bit of tension, right now it's locked off. This Robus has really nice control over tension. So you can see I can actually move this heavy lens into different angles and it stays put. However, as soon as I give it even a little bit off, it wants to flop. And when this thing flops on a ball head, it flops all over the place. I mean, just it just wants to roam. And for that reason, most people uh, prefer gimbal heads. They're just more stable. On a gimbal, you can take your hand off of it. And really the premise is on this, the weight is on top of the fulcrum down here. And on gimbals, the weight tends to be below. So the fulcrum is up here and the weight is below. So it just kind of rests itself naturally. Now, it doesn't mean that this is the only way to use a ball head. And while some wildlife photographers will use it in this orientation, I have found a couple other uses for it. And I'm going to take this off real quick and show you the most practical use. And that's really to exploit the ball head's versatility. When I first started, I wanted to do, you know, maybe a little bit of landscape, maybe a little bit of macro. It's, so the ball head seemed to be a really good option for that. So what I did is I went out and I bought a, a pretty good quality ball head, not the Robus that's on here. And then I brought bought this. This is Pro Media Gears Tomahawk. I've had this for years and years and years and years, and I still use it religiously. There's another version. 
uh, what we would call a side mount made by Wimberley. Very, very popular. It's called the Sidekick. I'm going to put both of those pieces down here at the bottom. And if you have more information, there'll be some links, some affiliate links down at, at the end that you can actually look those up to purchase if you're interested. Now, just from terms of price, this is $400. This is $300. That's $700. So pretty substantial investment. But I am getting, with this setup now, watch this, a high quality gimbal. A gimbal that pans vertically very smoothly and has this wonderful adjustable tilt head in the side mount configuration. A lot of these gimbals have what you call a cradle or swing arm. So this is how I've been using the ball head, again, with a side mount for years and years and years and years. I have found this to be extremely versatile and it gives me two pieces of equipment especially for the price of one. Now, one very expensive, $700 is for me a lot of money. You can also though get a ball head probably in the $200 range. I'm not gonna do a ball head review, but research this. You'll probably find reviews out there and you'll see ball heads in that $200 range that start to look like they can support your gear and, and functionally be very good for what you're gonna use it for. The Wimberley Sidekick is about $200. So for $400, you could get an effective gimbal that also has the versatility of the ball head. So something to consider there. Now, other uses for a ball head. Well, let me show you a couple here. I'm gonna take my heavy lens, but I'm gonna leave it this time in this right angle orientation, this 90 degree orientation. I'm gonna loosen this knob up all the way. And I'm going to, oop, wrong way. I'm gonna loosen that up all the way. And I'm gonna rotate it. Let me get my hand off here. There, I had the friction knob. Uh, this, one of the things about the Robus is it's got two friction knobs. It's got a drag here, and it's also got a, a lockout knob there. So I just had the tension turned up a little bit too high there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on, and I'm gonna keep it in the right angle or the 90 degree orientation. Now, while I don't recommend this as your primary gimbal, I do wanna show you that as a cheat, it becomes a gimbal. So I've got my horizontal panning, and now I also have my vertical tilting. It's off axis, which a lot of people don't like. It's uncomfortable for them. It doesn't look right, doesn't feel right. But if you didn't have a gimbal, and all you had was a tripod available, and you were doing birds in flight or something like that, this is a, an effective option. I'm actually gonna show you an image I had this situation happened. I left that, that tomahawk that I just showed you, I left it at home, but I had my ball head and this is what I ended up doing. And this is an image I produced from that day. So this is one way that you can kind of cheat a gimbal with a ball head. Let me show you a more practical way in a way that I still to this day use this. Now on this setup, I've got a 70 to 200. For a minute, I want you to pretend that this is flattened out and the ground is right here. On this ball head, I'm sitting up about maybe 10 inches. If I took the, if I took a standard gimbal size, I would also be up in the neighborhood of 10 inches. If I'm doing ultra low angle work and I wanna flatten these legs down, the ball head gives you this really incredible option to go sideways. Just like I, it is on that gimbal or that tripod, if I slide this here, notice I just dropped it from about 10 inches down to about two or three inches off the ground. Super, super, super low. I'm gonna show you an image now that I created with this exact setup for waterfowl. When I'm on the side of the lake or the pond that I'm shooting waterfowl on, I wanna get as low as possible. Often I'll use like a cushion or something like that, but I also use this setup with this mini tripod and a ball head tilted at 90 degrees. Now I showed this setup and I've got a different setup that I use on my Patreon account so if you're interested in all the kind of behind the scenes and tips and tricks, these are the kind of things that I show on there all the time. I've actually got a few more tips and tricks around this um, that are over on that account. So, but this is a great way to get lower angle. And I actually still use a ball head for this. So when I'm out low angle, I will, I will take sometimes a gimbal. I've got another gimbal hack that I'll show you in a future video. Uh, but this or my gimbal hack is what I use when I'm out there to get super low angle and I'm trying to shoot waterfowl or anything on the ground. One more example of ball heads. This is a monopod. Uh, you can see that you don't need a horizontal panning with monopods because they tilt themselves or they twist themselves. All you really need is this vertical tilt. 
Last week I tested a bunch of these monopod or these ball heads and I tested these ball heads out in the field. So I screwed them on here knowing that I didn't need that horizontal panning, but these also have it built in. So if I wanted to use the horizontal panning, I could. I simply took this in the vertical position, just like it is here. And I shot off a monopod with it. And I tested a few of these ball heads to see which ones I liked the best. Some of them were a little stiffer. Some of them were a little bit better. As you can imagine, the Robus, which is very big, probably too big for this setup, um, was, was very, very good. Some of the other ones I didn't like, they weren't quite as smooth. This Faisal though was, was pretty good. This is the one I've used for a long time. Uh, the oldest ball head that I have, it's the original one that I bought and I still use it to this day. And, and this is a configuration that you can use it in. So again, if you've got a monopod and for some reason you want to shoot in this configuration, you can do that. You can use a ball head on a monopod. You can use it on a tripod in a kind of pseudo gimbal situation. You can use it on a low angle situation to get even lower by tilting it on its side. So there are uses out there for wildlife. And of course, if you're a traditionalist and you want to just pop it right up, I will tell you this, if you use this configuration, I'm going to have to tighten this up a little bit because I don't want it to flop on me. It flops. If you've got a great ball head, you can do this. This Robus has great tension control. So you could see I can, I can get it and just, it, it kind of stays, but if it's just a little off, Watch me, I'm afraid to do it, but I just dropped the tension a little bit and there it goes. So because these are big, heavy lenses and you're on a, kind of this, this moving situation, if you don't have enough tension on there, it just, it just wants to flop. So I do see people using this, not my favorite way to do it. So quick video, hopefully you like the examples I provided today. I'm gonna to run back to the desk and wrap up. So in conclusion, ball heads can be great. They may not be the best primary head for your tripod. If you're shooting just dedicated off of a tripod and only shooting something like birds in flight or wildlife, then maybe a gimbal is a better choice. But I also showed you how I've been using this as a gimbal for years and years and years with no problems. I also showed you on a monopod how you can do it and how you can use a ball head to get a really great low perspective out in the field. For those reasons, I continue to use a ball head in my bag. It's there in my car or in my bag almost all the time. So think about what you need it for, what you're gonna use it for, and is it practical for you? As always, I do appreciate your ongoing support of the channel. Look forward to some more videos soon. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.